Matthew 13, verse 33. We're at the mysteries of the kingdom, or the parables of the kingdom. Now Paul will have his own mystery. In verse 33, another parable he spake unto them. The kingdom of heaven, not church age doctrine, is like unto heaven. And what he's doing is he's telling you, giving you examples of stories, how to describe what things are. Which a woman, that's quite interesting, a woman. It's like leaven, which a woman, leaven is a, is a yeasting compound. And in the Bible, it pictures sin. The Jews, during the Passover, they had a piece of unleavened bread. Bread that had no leaven in it, no leaven agents, didn't rise. Jewish bread is without leaven. He said, which a woman took and hid three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. So, here is his meal, here is the world. And why three measures, I don't know. But there are three measures and the leaven is put into that meal. Eventually, that leaven is going to overpower, overcome. The meal. You're not going to have one section of leaven and one section of dough. That doesn't happen. And we've been talking about uh, the kingdom as tares and wheat, which we're going to look at again in a moment. So, where does the good come from has been the question and the explanation where does the bad come from? Well, the good in this story is the meal. The bad of this story, the evil, is the leaven. So there's good, and there's bad, and it's mixed up. That's the perfect way to describe the world. Where did all the trouble come from? Well, Jesus told you in Matthew 13, the devil, the enemy, the wicked one, Satan. Why did God allow it to happen? Okay, it's not that he, why did he? What are you going to do with it? You have the right to approach the Almighty God and with your questions? God would have one question that would wipe us out. Why don't we do what he tells us to do? All these things thank Jesus unto the multitude in parables. And without a parable, thank he not unto them. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. But the thing is obvious, if you know your Bible, and I, I know my Bible pretty well, I don't know it all well. I understood what Jesus said in Matthew 13. There is God, and there is the devil. There are good people, there are evil people. There are people who are good, yet evil, or under the father of the devil. There are good people that are under God. Yet, if you were to go anywhere in the world today and bring forth this question to the people, they would not give you that answer. I don't know where it came from. I don't know, have any idea. And if you were to tell them the Bible version of life and creation, they laugh at you. To some people, it was nothing that exploded 
And here we are. And the United States companies and government spending all this money to find life they're not going to find out there. Because the only life that's in our space, according to the Bible, is the devil, is angels, powers, and principalities. And you want to stay away from that. Everything was well and great until Adam and Eve broke what God told them not to do. Eat the fruit. It's a lot better what colleges will come up. Then Jesus sent the multitudes away and went into the house. Whose house? I don't know. And the disciples came on him saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. And that was number two. Remember a householder went out and planted wheat overnight. Someone planted tares. And the question right, who where did these tares come from? And the disciples, when the people are going away, because the nation is rejecting Jesus. We are on the verge of them crying out to Pilate, crucify him, we'll take Barabbas, thank you. That's not the answer for God. And yet, you say, well, why did Jesus say all this? Well, there are 12 disciples here that want to know. And they're willing to take the time and study it out. See, God does not support laziness. You know, you're not going to sit there as a guru or as a monk or... And God's just going to throw it into your lap. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. Study takes time, takes work, takes energy. And he answered, said unto him, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, God. Son of Man is Jesus. Now, if Jesus set out and put man, good man on the earth, and you're going to not classify him as God, what do you classify him as? The Mormons will say that Jesus and Lucifer are brothers because they are created beings. In other words, God created Lucifer and God created Jesus like he did Adam and Eve. Well, you got a problem here because when it says the Son of Man, which is Jesus, is created. What do you do? The field is the world and throughout the Bible, the, the field pictures the world. And pretty much a field has no fruit or well-being of or man as its grasses and weeds. It might benefit your cows and sheep for food. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. That would be the millennium and the world. There's good seed out there. But the tares, that's the lookalike that the wheat produces fruit. The tares produce nothing and it, it only happens around the harvest time when you go out there, oh, okay, this is wheat, here's the fruit. This is nothing. This is the tear. And it looks like you almost have to have a double harvest where you got to go out there and get the tares and then you go get the wheat. 
the children of the wicked one. Well, that's the devil. And by the free will of man, God made Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve had children. It is our free will to choose if we're going to serve God or we're going to serve the devil or we're going to serve ourselves, which is primary the devil. There's no other. And there are some that teach as far as Cain and According to what the, what they and how they interpret the scriptures, that Eve had a relationship with the devil and all that. So that there's a breed of people, you know, especially of you know the, the, the satanic child of Rosemary's baby and all that. But I'm going to tell you something. The Antichrist is also going to be born like Jesus was born. Jesus is the incarnate God, God and man, 100 percent each. Satan, the Antichrist, is going to be the incarnate Satan born. But Mary wasn't God. Mary was a human being. And the mother of the Antichrist is just a woman. She ain't not a woman out of hell. You know, you talk about the Queen of Heaven. Well, in reality, with the Antichrist, where's the queen of hell? Because the Antichrist is a complete opposite, a complete imitation of the real Christ. And if Christ had a mother, and he did, that means the Antichrist is going to have a mother. And if you want to go into realms of religion and false teachings like in Jeremiah... The queen of heaven, well, you got to have the queen of hell. But that's not the case. So God has those that are of his, and Satan has those that are there, his. And if you got the group of people, neither God, neither Satan, you're of the world, and the world is of Satan, because Jesus said the world hates Jesus. And Satan hates Jesus. The enemy that sold them is the devil. He has sown into the children of men of Adam and Eve. Of Genesis 3. By sin entering into Adam, into Adam's seed. By the disobeying of God's word. The, la the, 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 the first Adam, the man of sin. And through Adam's seed, we are sinners. And there's no physical intercourse. Because the dangers, again, you get into like, demons and death. When you get into Roman and Greek mythology, where you got uh, Queen Diana, and you got uh, the Apollos, and you got Jupiter, and you got the Saturn, and you got you know uh, uh, the gods of, of the calendar dates and the men of the calendar dates, Thor's day. Because in the Roman and in Greek theology of their religion, and probably Babylonian too, is there were where the gods came and made it with the women, the good as as well as the Zeus, the main god of all gods. He had wives and children, children who battled other Zeus's children. The grandchildren of Zeus's children. And then you had the evil ones having their children and, and just nonsense. The enemy has sold them is the devil. And Jesus said, you are of your father the devil. Now, 
not a bloodline, but you represent your father, the devil. And you either have God as your father, or you have Satan as your father. And just because you say, our father in heaven, I'll be blah, 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 blah. Today, if you have not trusted and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, God is not your father. These Jews are ready out, some of them, ready to kill, ready to set forth and, and, and get rid of Jesus. But they're definitely not of the father. But of Satan. Judas became of Satan for allowing himself to betray Jesus. The harvest is the end of the world. So you can't put that into the... The church is not the end of the world. The church ends at the rapture, and sometime after the rapture, we don't even know, begins the tribulation period. Seven years. Alright, the church gets on horseback. We follow Jesus into the earth to get to Jews and bring them to their homeland and the millennium. And we'll, some will reign as kings in cities. But we're not the dominating force. It's not going to be the church in the, in the millennium saying, come to our church, invite them to church, our church, our greatest pastor, our greatest church, don't we have the great... No, 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 there's Jesus Christ, he's the one. And you're not going to pride yourself as the church because the people are the people of the nation of Israel. It's all about Israel. It's their kingdom, it's their land, it's their king, it's their lord. <laughs> Their temple, their, their state, their land, their, their priests. We're the bride of Christ. And it will be coming at a period of time at the end of the world. Now the church has already been raptured. The church has already been judged at the judgment seat of Christ. And the reapers are the angels. That's interesting. The Bible says heaven and earth fled. Hell gave up the hell, death and hell gave up the dead that were in them, the waters that gave up and, and Jesus said the angels can angels are gonna bring it forth. Remember a third of the angels are of the Satan. There'll be some angels bringing angels. As therefore the terrors are gathered, that's the bad one. They look. And, and, and listen, there are there are human beings since I don't know how far to go back in Adam's family. But the, there are there are human beings that you look at it's like, wow, they gotta be safe. They gotta be I mean they're just so great, they're so wonderful, they walk right, they talk right, they look right, and, and they're going to hell. There are good people in hell today. And those people are going to be shocked to realize who they're going to be in hell with. The wicked and vast gross. And yet they're going to be the wicked and vast gross in heaven by the blood of Jesus Christ. <laughs> As therefore the tares are gathered, the lost, the unfruitful, the children of the devil. That would include probably the angels. His angels. And burned in the fire. What end of the world fire event is there? It's surely not the grave. I and mean, what we're doing is we're re-backing up what we read a couple of nights ago and get into what the parable is. So shall it be at the end of the world. So all those that are of Satan, not God, burn. The Son of Man, Jesus, shall send forth his angels. This is not the second advent.
and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them that do iniquity. So when all the world is gone and burnt up, everybody living back to Adam, excluding church, are going to be brought together at this judgment called the Great White Throne Judgment. From the very last man that is born to the very first man that was created, Adam, and the one third of angels that are saved. Here they are. You say offend. Well, if they've been. You say there could be good people and that they look good and they're not good and all that. They offend God. And do iniquity. Depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. The iniquity has not been washed. The iniquity has not been cleansed. You, you're still in your sins. You die and go to hell. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. So Shadrach and Meshach and Nico are, are types of thrown into hell. Furnace of fire. But that is a Gentile hell. That is literally where the hell is the grave and the grave is hell when you throw a body into a furnace of fire and it burns up, okay? I, I, I'll take the Jehovah Witness of hell on that one. But see, now we're going beyond the body inside of a furnace. We're doing the souls that last forever, stepping away from, okay, Hell was not the furnace and Daniel. We're looking at the end of the world. We're looking at a furnace outside of Daniel. That is actually a lake of fire burning. There shall be weak wailing and gnashing of teeth. Now look at that. The field is the world. The wheat, the good seed, are the good children. The tares are them of the devil. And the fire is fire. And the fire that burneth is the furnace of fire. And there are people that go into that fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and the goat didn't wail and gnash his teeth. Now that particular expression of wailing and gnashing his teeth. The places you do find it, and I'm going to say it, I'm going to keep saying it, time I say it, because if I heard one idiot school teacher, uh, Sunday school teacher say it, I mean, probably a thousand idiot school teachers, uh, Sunday school teachers. Well, that doesn't mean hell. What does it mean then? Because you can't run back to Daniel. Chadrach, Meshach, and Indigo did not gnash and were wailing that fact it looks like they had a good time with Jesus. That would be almost like, all right, come out of there, guys. No, man, we love you, the Lord. Get out of there. No. And Jesus is like, get going. Obey the king. Oh, he's biting. Sorry. You're going to see wailing and gnashing the teeth. In reference to hell, I don't care what you teach. I don't, and he goes, well, that's what other men have told me. Oh, you're wrong. That's what the men were wrong. So look at the glimpse you get of the lake of fire. Because the lake of fire is after the judgment. The Bible says in Revelation 20, death and hell was cast into the lake of fire. What happens in the lake of fire? There are people wailing. They're what? Gnashing their teeth? Boy, if you're like me, if you got dentures, if you're, you're going to get your teeth back, 
and you're going to gnash him. Before I got my my dentures, and they took my teeth out, they had to take most of them all out. I'm telling you, I, I had nights I'd get out here, I'd be out here at my table, and I'd just be screaming in pain. I get ice, I get heat. I was, I was taking ID pro, ID broken by the bottle. I was just in pain. There's nothing more. And then, besides that, you ever just get a toothache? A toothache will, will get your attention when you don't need attention. Whether you're sitting in church or if you're at work or you sit at the table and you bite in something the wrong way, yow! That hurts! And you're looking for the 24 hour dentist. I mean, I sat here sometimes. I'm looking online. There's going to be a dentist open tomorrow. Will you take my insurance? Can you imagine having something as simple as a toothache with no Ambacil, no pain medication, no uh, Novocaine? In hell, with the rest of your body in pain. I had a doctor. He helped, a dentist helped me out. He's a Christian, and he pulled my front tooth out. In the middle of that procedure, I don't know if the Novocaine was weak or gave out. The Novocaine came out while he was pulling that tooth. I I I, I swear to you, I I apologize. I went up and I grabbed his face, and I was ready to rip it off his face. It had. And I screamed out. And I said, brother, and he would he, say, I was like, brother, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's not the first time. That's how angry these people are in hell are going to be. And then you're going to change the Bible for whatever stupid reason. That, you know, where else would you have such gnashing and teeth and wailing in a fire? All right, let's take it like this. Let's and I, it, it's happened. Let's let's take church history. There have been Christians who have been nailed, nailed, have been tied to faggots. You don't nail them, you tie them. Now, a faggot is a pole that is designed and probably put into tar. And what they do is they tie Christians up on faggots. They start a fire at, the, at their feet. And these faggots would burn up and it would burn the Christians alive till they die. All right. There may be a Christian dying on the faggots. Torture for the word of God in Jesus Christ. But eventually the, the, the weeping and the gnashing of teeth, which primarily most of them didn't do it, thank you, to God's glory. But, okay, the weeping and the gnashing of teeth ends when that person takes his last breath and is present with the Lord. Absent from the body and present with the Lord. There's no more wailing and gnashing of teeth. There's no end to it. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth, period. Then shall the righteous, those of the good seed, shall sign forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Don't you dare go run and say that's me or you as a Christian. There's been no Christian in this chapter. These are Jewish people who have obeyed God and the law or Jesus. And there is nothing better to God the Father than a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in his presence that they obeyed the law or more so they trusted the Messiah, their son. That pleases God.
Oh, you walked the church aisle and you trusted Jesus Christ and you, you, you didn't do nothing, nothing anymore in the rest of your life. You're not going to be shining. Except for the bald head you have in heaven. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now he's been teaching parables. Well, he's aside with his disciples. You got listen to me. If you're going to listen, listen to me. Hear me out. Do you know somebody who did not hear him? Judas. Judas is in hell today. Gnashing and wailing. <laughs> Bible says he went to his own place. There is nothing finer than not a Christian. There is nothing finer to the Father but a Hebrew that adhered to the law and the Messiah. And there is nothing more in particular to God today in the body of Christ that one of those members is Jewish. Us Gentiles are only in it because to be a stumbling block to Israel. Paul said, had it not been for the Jews' rejection of Jesus, we all would stand at the great white throne judgment and our conscience would have judged us. Because our conscience, our heart tells us adultery is wrong, murder is wrong, sodomy is wrong. Unless you're in America. And America would have taught you how to go to hell. But there's no America. There's no church. We're talking to Jewish now, one of his disciples was, was a Gentile, the, the, uh, uh, the Canaanite, Simon. We got a couple more to look at in a later date.